All right, well, why don't we take a look then, because we've, we've talked about, to some degree, mm -hmm. optimizing some of the radiation therapy. Uh, Dr. Hamlin, what are some of the risks involved with the current methods, radiation notwithstanding, uh, of treating Hodgkin lymphoma? I'm thinking of secondary malignancies, uh, cardiovascular disease. I think to Dr. Moskowitz's point, I think we have to acknowledge that there's toxicities both from chemotherapy as well as from the radiation component that we're trying to minimize. From, from the standard chemotherapy program, we've moved away from leukemogenic uh, regimens like MOP that led to a AML and MDS at rates that were unacceptable, and now the standard of care is ABVD chemotherapy generally as our backbone. A and cardiotoxicity from adriamycin and pulmonary fibrosis from bleomycin are, are toxicities that we still have to contend with. And I think we can acknowledge that the long-term consequences of doc doxorubicin do have impact on the contractility of the heart. How clinically relevant that is for most patients over their lifetime is, I think, still a question. In terms of secondary cancers, the biggest concern that we have in young women, which is a predominant population that gets affected with Hodgkin's lymphoma, is secondary breast cancer. And that rate with older radiation techniques was unacceptably high, I think, and that's why we have this discussion smokers also had unacceptably high rates of lung cancer. Um, and for those reasons, the radiation oncologists have been very diligently decreasing the amount of radiotherapy and the field that they use and going to great lengths to uh, avoid tissues that can lead to secondary malignancies. And, and I think we have some hints already that that has made an impact on that rate of secondary malignancy from our colleagues who have looked at pediatric patients over long term. I want to get into pediatric versus adults in a minute, but this is just me now, personal communication, unpublished data, salgo at all. Uh, we always look in the operating room for patients with a history of bleo, mm -hmm. because giving them high FiO2s is a real issue. My sense is we're seeing a lot fewer of them. Has that been the trend? Well, I, I think there's a, an awareness of bleomycin and lung toxicity, so we're cognizant of it. We're more apt to stop bleomycin at the first hint that there's a decline in diffusing capacity. We see less smokers, so one of the consequences of a declining population of smokers is that bleomycin toxicity is related to smoking, so that may have an impact as well. And our, and our radiation fields are no longer including the lung, which may also have been a mm -hmm. component. Whether or not the colony stimulating factors uh, have a kindling effect for bleomycin pulmonary toxicity, I think it's a matter of debate, but we've moved away from using sort of GCSF as a way to support ABVD. We're also going to try to eventually move away from bleomycin, but I think that it's, a, it's important to remember for uh, those who are listening is that although radiation therapy can cause uh, secondary cancers, um, I personally have never seen a person die from radiation therapy, uh, treatment from Hodgkin lymphoma, but I already have seven patients in my career who have died from bleomycin lung toxicity. Right. So um, on the planet, not on the planet, Bleomycin wins, and I think that if I had my druthers removing radiation therapy versus bleomycin from the management of Hodgkin lymphoma, I would personally prefer to remove bleomycin. I would say uh, there have been several attempts over the last 10 years to try to eliminate or reduce the dose of bleomycin, and those attempts have failed in large randomized trials. So although we're continuing to study that, and I'm sure we'll get to some of the new studies a little bit later, uh, right now, bleomycin still is an uh, important part of the regimen, and for most patients, still it plays a role. And what about catching the heart in the port and getting accelerated atherosclerotic disease? Is, is that Well, radiotherapy them? is much better planned than it used to be. The ports are much smaller, so that probably is less of a risk than it was in the past. But back to your bleomycin question, uh, what Paul brought up is important. We no longer use so much in the way of growth factors and perhaps we don't have patients that are as at risk for bleomycin pulmonary toxicity as we did in the past when growth factors uh, came to be. There's, there's one other issue we really have skirted, and that is the issue of infertility. You know, that we're talking about a group of people that are young people, 20s and 30s. We used to use um, much more in the way of alkylating drugs, which in addition to causing MDS and acute leukemia, also caused infertility issues. And I think that's another thing that we need to talk about in terms of policing our own chemotherapeutic use, since we're not radiotherapists in the panel. Um, you know, when we talk about treating younger people, uh, in that they are going to have a long life, and we want them to have as normal a life mm -hmm. as possible.